It's the bus that introduced the word low height rather than low bridge. Join me on a return journey into the history of the Bristol Low Decker. In the immediate era after the Second World War, the railway system in the UK was still huge. The beaching cuts that decimated the system were still at least 15 to 20 years away. But Jake, I hear you say, we're here to look at buses, not trains. Why do you keep going on about these trains for? Well, dear viewer, it's like this. With the expansive railway network came a number of low bridges. In fact, quite a lot of low bridges, which caused a headache to the operators of double-decker buses. In the mid-1940s, if you wanted a low-height bus, it was to the rather awkward low bridge design, and it kind of looked like this Bristol K-Type, although this is a later model. The low bridge design consisted of a conventional centre aisle on the lower deck, but on the upper deck there was an aisle on the offside, and it was a sunken aisle as well, and this protruded into the lower deck, as you can see in this picture, which is just right for banging your head on when you stand up on those offside seats, isn't it? On the upper deck, the awkwardness continued with four abreast seating, which made collecting fares really, really awkward. You imagine being stuck by the near side window with everyone smoking woodbines as well. It wasn't a very nice environment, very cramped and awkward. So before we come to the history of the low decker, just a word of what was going on at Bristol Commercial Vehicles at the time. Post-war Britain saw the election of a Labour government and their idea was to nationalise much of the country's transport services, including the railways, inland waterways, road haulage and of course bus and coach services. In September 1948, one month before that year's commercial motor show, the Tilling Group took the decision to sell out to the state. Now, at that time, both Bristol and Eastern Coachworks were owned by the Tilling Group. And one of the byproducts of nationalisation was that Bristol and Eastern Coachworks couldn't sell to the open market. Despite this, Bristol still exhibited at the 1948 Commercial Motor Show, which was to be their last one for many years. Here, they displayed something new. This was the Bristol M-Type. And it was a chassis that was designed to take either double deck or single deck bodywork. On the front of the chassis was a very wide, large radiator grille. Unfortunately, the M-Type was never to go into production. So why am I telling you all about this? Well, when the prototype Bristol Low Decker appeared, those big wide radiator grilles appeared on the prototypes. Now, despite nationalisation and the restrictions that it brought, Bristol was still looking at releasing a improved low height double decker bus. By 1948 the company had already applied for patents covering the design of a bus with closely integrated chassis and body sides with a low frame and driving axle, split transmission and lots of other alternative designs. During the summer of 1949, the first prototype was assembled and sent off to Lowestoft for bodying by Eastern Coachworks. This became LHY949 and was a member of Bristol Tramway's fleet. Breaking from Bristol tradition, which saw the vehicles following an alphabetic system, the new model was called the Low Decker. By the end of March 1950, Another prototype had been built and this became JWT712 and was allocated to West Yorkshire Road Car Company. Both the prototype buses were Bristol engine vehicles, being powered by the 8.25 litre AVW diesel engine. On both the prototype buses, the drive shafts were split into two and ran down either side of a sunken gangway on the lower deck. This coupled to a drop centre rear axle and a slightly shallower chassis cross members meant that the lower deck floor was a lot lower. 
than on conventional double-decker buses, which meant that a normal layout with the central gangway upstairs could be obtained on a bus that was only 13 foot 5 inches tall. The prototypes were extensively tested and one was exhibited at the 1951 Festival of Britain. It's no understatement to say that this was a cutting edge design and a real coup for Bristol commercial vehicles. In February 1953, the first two pre-production low deckers were delivered to Eastern Coachworks at Lowestoft for bodying. Now it might seem strange that there was such a long delay between the prototypes and the pre-production vehicles. But around this time Bristol commercial vehicles were also developing the Bristol LS single decker bus and this delayed the production of the low decker but it worked in the low decker's favour because the prototypes were extensively tested. There were six pre-production vehicles in total and they were all to a slightly new design that featured just one propeller shaft running down the offside of the central gangway which coupled to a newly designed rear axle. Gone too was the exposed radiator of the prototypes. Bristol had developed an enclosed bonnet and cowl which concealed the radiator. An outline of the Bristol style radiator with vertical slats occupied the full depth of the cowl. The operation of the pre-production Bristol low deckers highlighted a few other issues and this delayed the production of the low decker even more and it wasn't until September 1953 that production got underway. The first chassis being delivered to Eastern Coachworks for body in by November 1953. The early batches or sanctions as Bristol used to call them were either powered by the Bristol AVW engine or the Gardner 6LW or the Gardner 5LW engines. Bristol engine buses became LD6Bs. Six cylinder Gardner engines became LD6Gs and the five cylinder Gardner engines became LD5Gs. The first production bus was RFM407 and that became Crosville's ML662. Bristol low deckers started to enter service in large numbers and could be seen at all ends of the country and in Scotland as well where they were proving very popular. In the spring of 1955 another subtle change appeared and it made perhaps the low decker that we all know and love. The long grill was swapped over for the shorter grill as can be seen in this picture. The changeover from the long grill to the short grill was a long process and sometimes buses of the same batch had a mixture of the two fronts. Most operators were by now specifying 60 seat bodywork rather than the original 58 seat bodywork too. Alongside the standard low deckers there were other variations, these being coach seated ones which went to companies like Crosville, Thames Valley and Eastern National. And in 1956, the first convertible Bristol low deckers appeared and these had detachable roofs that could be taken off in the summer to turn them into open top buses. And these were also for Crosville. From 1956, low deckers started to appear with the cave brown cave radiators at either side of the destination box at the front upper panels of the bus. The front wings were also shortened on the buses around this time to aid brake cooling. Production of the Bristol LD type low decker continued all the way through to 1961 and by then Bristol were developing an upgrade and an improvement to the low decker design. Now one issue that Bristol did have with the low decker design and indeed all their other designs was that their restriction to the open market prevented it being sold to anybody outside the tilling group companies. Bristol managed to get around this by licensing production of the low decker to Dennis Brothers of Guildford, who produced it under the name of the Low Line. And the story of the Guildford low decker is one that's worthy of a video in its own right. In fact, the low decker was to spurn several copycat versions, including the AEC Bridgemaster, the AEC Renown 
and the Leyland Lowlander. None of these had the success of the original Bristol Low Decker product though. I interrupt this program for a little bit of advertising. Do you remember the glory days of East Kent Road Car Company Limited? Did you used to travel regularly on the maroon and cream buses? Did you drive for East Kent Road Car Company Limited? Or are you an enthusiast of the buses and coaches? If you've answered yes to any of those questions, then Friends of the East Kent are the group for you to join. We are currently actively preserving five old East Kent Road Car Company buses and hold on to a lot of East Kent Road Car Company memorabilia. Of the buses Friends of the East Kent own, three are AEC and two are Guys. One of these guys is a 1951 Guy Arab FFN382. Friends of the East Kent acquired this in 2022 and as you can see it is requiring a complete restoration and rebuild. But it is well within our capabilities and a lot of our maintenance work is done in house. We're also part way through the restoration of AEC Swift VJG187J which was new to East Kent in 1970. We also have a further Guy Arab, an AEC Regent and an AEC Bridgemaster as well. Membership is just £10 a year and for that you get a quarterly newsletter, you get access to our membership Facebook page and a chance to join us on days out to various bus rallies around the southeast of England. And we're always looking for volunteers as well. And we are a very friendly bunch too. If this is something that rings your bell, you can find us on Facebook where you can also contact us or you can email andrew underscore watkins at line1.net for further details. Thanks very much. Back to the main feature. In 1958, Bristol Commercial Vehicles produced two further experimental low-deckers. These vehicles featured a revised chassis design, which eliminated the need for a sunken gangway on the lower deck. As with the original low-decker design, Bristol Commercial Vehicles worked very closely with Eastern Coachworks, as a lot of the strength of the vehicle came from the bodywork. The new design reduced the depth of the chassis members, but reinforcing trusses formed the body sides by a corresponding amount, so there was a perimeter frame to the chassis. This meant that the window frame length was no longer dictated by where the cross members on the chassis were. Also, the rear platform support extensions to the chassis were disposed with and this area was now designed to be supported by the framework of the Eastern Coachworks body. One of the first was displayed in the summer of 1958, and it was 285 HFM for Crossville. As this featured the cave brown cave radiators on either side of the destination blind, the need for a conventional radiator was eliminated, and it had a blank front panel with the Bristol winged motif on the front. Full production of the flat floor low deckers was underway by December 1959. During July 1959, a 30-foot long forward entrance model with the designation FLF, flat floor long wheelbase forward entrance, was delivered to Eastern Coachworks. This was to emerge as 995EHW, the first Bristol FLF, and that was destined for Bristol Omnibus Company. It had a large air-powered sliding door rather than the usual jackknife doors that you see in this picture here. The chassis had had modifications with extra framework on the near side to support the forward platform at a low level, which enabled a stepless entrance to be achieved. Who said low floor buses were anything new, eh? Some of the early low deckers that had the forward sliding air powered door were later rebuilt to have the double jackknife doors. At the same time that 995 EHW was being built, 
The next bus in production was chassis number 156002 and that was a Bristol FSF flat floor short wheelbase forward entrance and that was allocated to West Yorkshire as YWW77. Forward entrances on buses were becoming popular at this time because it meant that the driver could supervise the platform while the conductor collected the fares elsewhere on the bus. Other variants of the flat floor low decker were the FL type low decker and this was the flat floor long wheelbase rear loading bus and this was one of the rarer varieties of the low decker with just 45 FLs being built. This variation being operated by Eastern Counties, Hanson Dorset, Lincolnshire, Red and White and Western SMT. The more popular rear loading low decker model with the flat floor was the FS, flat floor short wheelbase. 890 of these were built, all bodied by Eastern Coachworks and could be seen in every corner of the country. In Scotland, the FS type low decker was not as popular as the LD low decker, but the FLF in Scotland became a very popular type of bus. Indeed, it was so popular that in the 1970s, the Scottish bus group decided to swap their early Bristol VRs, which they felt were rather unreliable, with Bristol low deckers from the English fleets. Throughout the 1960s, the flat floor low decker production continued. In 1965, Leyland took a 25% stake in the Bristol and Lowestoft companies. And in that process, Bristol and Eastern Coachworks regained their freedom to trade outside of the state-owned companies. Now, while the Bristol RE single decker, which was fairly new design at the time, seemed to benefit from this and picked up a lot of orders from outside the tilling group, the same could not be said for the low decker. As you've probably seen in one of my previous videos, double decker buses by this stage were falling out of favour and the legalisation of one person operated single decker buses had occurred. Towards the end of low decker production, another variation came along and this was the 31 foot model, which had 78 seats with the extra length in the rear overhang. These were particularly popular over the border in Scotland. Throughout this period, the Bristol low decker design still continued to evolve. Semi-automatic transmission became available as well as engine power supplied by the 6LX Gardner engine and the Leyland 0600 engine. The Leyland engine was introduced to replace the Bristol engine which was phased out around this time. In 1966 the last sanction or batch of Bristol low deckers was ordered and these would not be delivered to operators until the summer of 1968. The last low deckers of all were 55 seat coaches for Eastern National and they were built to the 31 foot long length. The very last Bristol low decker of all was Midland General 313 which took the registration number of YNU351G and was delivered to its owner during September 1968. It was a 70 seat Bristol FLF 6LX with a semi-automatic transmission and fortunately this bus survives today in preservation. Production at Bristol Commercial Motors then focused onto the Bristol VR which was the low decker's replacement. It featured a rear engine and was suitable for one person operation and is covered in another one of my classic bus histories videos. Although production of the low decker had finished, the majority of them went on to see many, many, many years service and well, lasted well into the National Bus Company era where they donned National Bus Company Poppy Red and National Bus Company Leaf Green. It was only the escalation of one person operated buses that saw the end of low decker operation in the early 1980s. Another extension to a many old buses life is that of a conversion to open top. 
and this has seen many Bristol low deckers life extended beyond the normal service capabilities. A lot of seaside and coastal areas have open top seasonal services including Southern Vectors as seen by MDL 954. A lot of Bristol low deckers passed on to second and third hand operators. Here they continue to give many years of faithful service as school buses, contract buses and private hire vehicles. In fact, in any area where it wasn't actually a necessity to have a one person operated bus or a conductor stood on the back of the bus collecting fares. In the early 80s, one small independent operator in Perthshire in Scotland set up their business on local buses and that was based on the Bristol Lowdecker. Now, I think we all know who this is, don't we? Although Stagecoach had been running long distance coaches, they wanted to diversify into the local bus services. And what better bus for them to choose than the Bristol FLF low deckers? And they had some rear loading low deckers as well, alongside some London Transport Route Masters. And indeed, Brian Souter has been quoted as saying that the Bristol low decker reigns supreme as one of the most sturdy and reliable buses built in the post war period. Many low deckers found their way into bus company driver training fleets over the years. And as with the open top conversion, this extended the life of many vehicles and brought them into the era where bus preservation became very mainstream and popular, thus allowing many vehicles to survive where they probably wouldn't have done. A lot of these driver training buses lasted in service in this second life up until the mid 1990s when driver training legislation changed. Rather more drastic conversion is that of a tow bus and the Scottish bus group were particularly keen on this. As you can see there's not much of the original Eastern Coachworks bodywork left behind but with the Gardner engine and the manual gearbox this thing would have an awful lot of grunt and it would have the ability to tow another bus the same size if not bigger than that. It's fair to say that the most popular form of afterlife for a Bristol low decker is that of an export bus. Their low height makes them incredibly popular abroad and they have often left this country in many shades of London Transport Red with London Transport on the side and destinations such as Piccadilly, Victoria painted onto the destination panel. They also proved very popular for overland tours with a company called Top Deck Travel in the 1970s and 80s, where Bristol low deckers were converted into rolling mobile homes. Talking of mobile homes, this is probably one of the strangest uses for a Bristol low decker that I have actually ever come across. And this is an FLF that has been converted into a trailer. And I think the plan eventually is to turn this into a mobile home. But it does seem a bit of a shame that it's no longer under its own power. I believe this is in America. Sadly, though, the majority of Bristol low deckers bit the dust and went for scrap. Although I think this particular one survived with Western Greyhound for a while. Fortunately though there are many preserved Bristol low deckers of all marks. LD, FS and FLF types around for us to ride on now. And they are absolutely very very popular buses when they go to shows. And it's always worth if you've never ridden on one which to be fair I find quite surprising. It's always worth giving it a go and having a ride on a Bristol low decker because they are absolutely lovely buses. And finally, how can I not mention on the buses? Even today, the program is still being shown on various TV networks around the world. And it goes to prove how popular it was, even in this politically correct day and age. Bristol low deckers supplied by Eastern National featured heavily in the TV series and a Crosville Bristol low decker featured heavily in Holiday on the Buses. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look into the history of the Bristol low decker. Please remember that I've just literally touched on the subject and I couldn't hope to cover everything and all marks and all bus companies. 
If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel as that helps the channel grow. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.